What I am going to speak today, I like to be forgiven in advance. <laughs> Therefore, please, I am going on a record. If anybody has an objection to today's lecture, he can leave the class. Because I have to teach today as a teacher and not a public relation. Is it acceptable? Thank you. Uh, you know, I fully understand that you are Western. And when we call Western, anything from Istanbul to the west side is Western. It's not a civilization. It's a geographical point. So technically speaking, you are Western. But I also understand you have no concept of a teacher. You are Western, I understand. And I like you because you are aggressive. And I also like you, your mental case. No, no, listen to me, it's very clear. Because what you know, you know. Or what you know, it is your fantasy or reality. But you do not have hypocrisy. That's what you like. I like Orientals have worst hypocrisy in the world. They will never, never say what they feel. They never say what they are. And they will they say, yes, yes, yes. I went to Japan and I asked the guy to bring my food. And he brought me meat. And I said, I'm vegetarian. He said, yes, yes. And he took away the plate, he brought again. And it was a little different meat than uh, that meat. <laughs> and I said, I am a vegetarian. And I don't eat meat. He went, he brought in very chopped up snake. And I said, what is this? He said, this is special dish snake. I said, still it is a meat. Yes, yes. <laughs> Sixth time I asked him to call the manager. He came, he said, all these dishes are made for a special guest and you are a special guest. I said, get me fruit. He brought me orange. That was my lunch. But they didn't say one word. All they said, yes, sir. yes. Sir. Second time I went to Japan, I knew it, so I stayed at the Ginza Hotel and I told them I'm a vegetarian. And pre-handly arrangement should be made. So I went there. So they put me a dish, a orange, a banana, an apple, and uh, a very well sorted peas, green peas, and this and that, four or five things, rice, it was, thank God, whatever it is, we ate. The bill came $80 US per person. <laughs> so I asked this guy, I said, what is this $80 for? This is about $1 food. He said, it was specially flown from California, where you came. <laughs> and he said, it contains the cost of bringing it here, telephone cost and everything. We have lost $20 on this one dish. I mean, it cost them $100, they've charged us $80. And I said, for what? He said, this is what you eat. This, you come from Los Angeles? I said, yeah. He said, so we brought the food from there. <laughs> I paid the bill. I didn't, I didn't mind. I didn't say. So, you can't not understand, and you may please somebody to do any way you want, and you are Western. And you think I have come here for religion. That's not true. That's not even today true. They made me a religious leader because they thought I'm too dangerous to be left out. <coughs> oh, yes, that's true. And they put this uh, hackle around my neck and 
in my environments and circumstances, it was not easy for me to say no, so I accepted it. But uh, technically speaking, when I was at the customs airport, I saw you Western coming with a lot of money and going to India to Swamiji's and Yogiji's and Mahatmaji's, God knows what. And rule is when you come to India, you in those days you have to declare money and you, you have to fill in a currency form. That was it. There was no restriction. So when you bring in what you bring in and take out, so that was written. And I saw people bringing thousands and thousands of dollars and going back with just 10 bucks. And uh, whenever they sat down, I asked them a question about yoga. They was worse than they came in. So I thought to my mind, if ever I get a chance to go to the West to teach, I'll stay there in the West and teach. And I'll produce teachers. I'll never acquire students. On 5th of January, some 20 some years ago, 27 something, I declared my purpose. They asked me, what are you come for? I said, I'm not come here to collect students. I have to come here to create teachers. That's why I'm sticking with the teachings and I'm sticking with the dialogue I'm in knowingly that you are not yet ready to be teachers. Your ego is too much. It's a good thing. It's a bad thing. You do not have reverence. You are like a plastic. You know that plastic card, what do you call it? Credit card. Credit card. You put it in, you do this, and that's it. For you, that's it. And you then put in through it, it goes, it goes. It doesn't go, it doesn't matter who you are. Who you are, you have to show a driving co driver car of your license. So your personal presence in West has no identity. And your personal presence in West as a teacher has no identity either. You are full of full. I don't want to use that word which I'm willing to say. I think you understand my sentiments. <laughs> you are full of that super full. You are neither a woman, nor a man, nor even a mammal. You are just bubbly little ego, jumping around. You have no width. You have no tolerance. You have no even patience to listen. It's so amazing. And still, you are very beautiful people. It's a classic blunder God made. I mean, <laughs> it's a fact. I mean, the most perfect Almighty God went berserk and created you all. Do you understand that in your life, there is no other principle prevalent but to be mutual. Negative is as good as positive. It's the filament which creates the light and it's the vacuum which brightens it. Do you understand? Law of light. That's why you had a candle, you put the glass around it to create that. That's why you have bulb, you have a tube, whatever you have. Everything is a law of vacuum is there's no vacuum. So the most insane person has some sanity somewhere, and most sane person has equal and insanity somewhere. But the insanity and to be sane doesn't matter. Question is, do you have a width to open up, to accommodate, to listen, to understand, and to be from another point of view? So you may not end up screwing the whole thing. Do you have a little one minute patience? I was talking today to our herbal things we have got and the lady brought a herb packet which cost about 90 some dollars and it promises you everything. It has some 
grape seed and some some this wonderful thing they're charging it and it gives energy and she was extremely very happy it energizes me ba 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 and i said yeah why don't you take just these few they are cheap and you can be fine what's the difference i say our all formulas are anti fatigue we don't stimulate we don't stretch the human energy we minus the fatigue and human is left with energy it's simple thing because gadi body is a very dedicated delicate decent machine it cannot be overcharged over rushed in anything now people hallucinate with drugs well, i have nothing to do with it all i said when i came to united states drugs are drag let's have organic breath to be that's why people started following me i said there's an organic natural way to be high and when i was there i used to see 60 70000 people naked running around in this pop festival i was the main feature speaker i have seen you naked i have seen you first experience of mine i yelled at shakti i went to take a bath i came in, in the tv two couples were doing what bees and birds do and i said shakti watch what is happening in the tv <laughs> she was the mother superior then and she came in and it was worth it first yoga class i taught in new mexico meadow and i was teaching cow and cat pose a girl was under and the boy went in and did the whole by the time i got up and came and asked him what are you doing he said i have enjoyed it <laughs> I was what I'm saying I know you You're not foreign to me And you're not that great hero with those two hanging testicles which you think you are the biggest macho on the earth And if that 6 inches thing is your main object what about your 6 inch 6 foot 6 inches whole being And if that 3 inches female is all you have and what about your total height after your full person so what comes to down is that this chakra from which chakra you dwell and from which chakra you live and with which chakra you project are we talking projection today yes sir from which it's not where your chakra is open and is closed is it where you are at is your projection from here or from there or from there why you call each other as holes is a chakra wrong chakra for a wrong subject you see you must understand you are 10% 10% 10% projection and ob- object and subject are 10% you can't be more than that there's no way 80% is unknown the idea of intuition is not ideas of not a intuition is not to not know idea of intuition development of intuition is you got to know 80% you are missing 80% and don't misunderstand that people have put a turban on and they have become sikhs and all that i tell you what when i came one day and i came to the ashram and i saw guru singh with a turban on and he was doing a chair polishing a chair and i said who are you oh, I said, oh guru singh i said what you done to your head he said what i put a turban on i said oh what do you mean we put a turban on 
Isn't somebody has to look like a teacher? I said, look like a teacher or being a teacher are two different things. He said, well, somewhere one day, but he had to start. I didn't ask you to put turban on. It's a damn yamaka which you have been wearing centuries long. As Jews, as Christians, as Muslims. Because there is 26 bone and there's a cradle adjustment. And that self-crowning and that adjustment is your right. Your skull has exactly 26 parts. As you have 26 vertebrae, as your foot has 26 bones, one bone off with a muscle and nerve will give you a relevant sickness. One vertebra lose only one Thousandth of a millimeter will give you disease. One part of the cranial off will give you absolutely depression, which you cannot take it. What's wrong with you? You are depressed because your cranial is off. And your pattern in your neurological system cannot recuperate. I'm not folks tying turban because I'm a Sikh, and I'm not tying turban because I'm running a boutique business. Not at all. And I'm not teaching a religion minus reality. I'm a scientist. I came in United States to be in United States. I'm not seeking student. I don't initiate. But I am obligated, somebody touched me and taught me. I'm willing to touch somebody. I mean, people have, a lot of students of mine have a great misunderstanding of me. They, want, they think I'm going to take away something from them. It's not true. Because I'm very qualified on a law of vacuum. Sometimes I make a student, if I'm in a good, good mood, not otherwise to create a vacuum. Because when I say something and they do something, it's a high command. And then all the low areas walks in. It's a, this is how the weather is. So what I'm trying to explain to you, this teacher course we are teaching first time as a certified course, has a purpose. Your student can sue you in the court of law. And one of the students sued me because I gave a lecture in Boston that beets are good for health. I mean, forget about suing for something else. I'm telling you how much they can go to sue. So what I'm trying to explain, we are trying to certify you with a point of view that if you stand in the court of law, you can stand as honorable and one can walk in tall. And every legitimate court of law which is supposed to do justice must understand the basic elementary knowledge has been given and person is made to understand and is real. This is not unified church that you give $20 and you get a certificate. It's not that you give $25 and you're certified as sannyasi. It's not true. When we certify somebody as a minister, somebody has the chancellor office of a legal office to go through the system and qualify in writing, and then issued. We didn't make Singh Saab and Mukhya Singh Saab to add anybody's ego. We gave it because we thought people will become humble and give width and grace of leadership. It was not a test of performance, honesty, and knowledge. It was a test of grace, width, and service.
People have been misunderstanding things. And I've gone through a lot of pain. I always say that if you want to make my physical portrait, take the peanut shells and that many stabs I have and that many scab I have got. You know, you feel very hurt, really, as a human, when you raise a person like your child, you teach him and you start seeing the promise. Or let us put it this way, if I see somebody has a destiny and some promise, and then they start barking and bitching at me, you see how painful it is? I have seen in this last 27 years people living and rotting. I'm not upset with that either. Come and go is not my control, because when you control somebody, you carry the weight. But if you have an ego, you shall not be teacher, my amigo. You will be just an actor. Kundalini Yoga is not a yoga of everybody or anybody. Kundalini Yoga, who practices, commands five tattvas, seven gunas, chakras, and all 108 elements in the universe, including the conscious creation of the Creator. Let's be clear about it. Kundalini Yoga is not a religion. Religions came out of it. Kundalini Yoga is not a fad, and it's not a cult. It's a practice of experience of a person's own excellence which is dormant and which is awakened. <coughs> I hope you fully understand. If you see you are rich, you are rich. If you see you are poor, you are poor. If you see you are great, you are great. If you see you are not, you are not. If you are a pimp and a prostitute, you are, bless you. And if you are very saintly and divine and humbly and great, fine. Whatever you are, you are a piece of shit if you are not awakening your own dormant power to become totally excellent. By flowing in a boat in a row, you can reach the ocean. But you will never know the power of swimming through it. That is what it is. Kundalini Yoga is dangerous for those who have to practice to use it as a hook. The God is a pure energy, whosoever misuses it, it destroys that person. So I'll just explain to you what it is. So everything has benefits and everything has a loss. Everything is a balance. Life is a balance. I came here to teach yoga, and I was teaching as a yogi, and I lost all my friends. Anybody remembers when you start teaching Kunjali Yoga, what three things happens? Mm. Yeah, go ahead. Your eating habits change, your dress, the way you dress changes, the way you communicate changes, and all your friends and family. These changes are a must. Are you willing to accept these changes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kundalini's yoga is not a commercial nonsense. It's not a public relation. Either a practitioner practices pure or should not practice it should not practice it. Because the system has a power in itself not to pollute itself. 
the system itself does not allow anybody to pollute the system. That's why we call it golden chain of royal linkage. It's a Raj Yoga. It's a Raj Yoga empowering your royalty and your reality at the same time in the most graceful way. King is a human. Emperor is a human. But he rules the human. <coughs> Beggar is a human. And he begs to stay as a human. That's the difference. And this difference shall continue. This is not my part that I have to explain to you. It's my part to state it as it is. It's not Judaism. It is not Christianity. It is not Islam. It is not Hinduism. It's not Sikhism. It's not Shinto. It's not Tao. It's not this. It is not that. It is Kundalini Yoga. <laughs> 